Glad to have you with us on the program today, Megan Mozak. Joined by Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Of course, Kirk and Paul are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And today we're going to be focused on retirement planning. That's what we talk about here on the show. And that is Kirk and Paul's focus. They help you get to and through retirement with some of their best tips and strategies, their insights. And we also talk about their classes. Now, Kirk and Paul teach classes at local universities. And the great thing is they've been really flexible because of the pandemic. We've had to make some changes. So we're meeting you wherever your comfort level is. If you'd like to take a virtual class, you can do that. They're also hosting smaller classes. Wherever you are on that comfort level, they will make sure you get educated. That's what this is all about. You can register for the class today by calling 800-240-8981. Again, that's 800-240-8981. Very easy to get registered online as well. Retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk and Paul, great to be back with you. It's good to be here. Good to be here, Megan. You know, we're all parents and we know that our kids, we like to think that they're angels, but the fact of the matter is they're just not, not 100% of the time. They get themselves into certain sticky situations, right? They get in trouble. And a lot of times it has to do with behavior. We like to correct behavior when we see it going down the wrong path. And it's easy to do when you see those warning signs, right? Ahead of time, you can get them back on track and get them out of that path that's headed downhill. We can do that as well, right? We can do that as investors, as people who are looking out for their finances, their future, their retirement, There are some behaviors that we know will get us in financial trouble, are there not? There are, Megan. There's 10 that we're going to talk about today. And, you know, it often just goes back to something that's being researched and studied and has been for a long time. It's called behavioral finance. And um, we, we all tend to somehow fall into one of these mistakes, these traps, or a number of these mistakes and traps because of human behavior, because of anxiety, fear, greed, arrogance narcissism for some people. It runs the gamut, but there are particular ones that we are specifically going to cover, Paul, that I think are really important to be aware of, be insightful about when it comes to your finances. Because at the end of the day, Paul, what we talk about, what we teach in our classes, it's all related to retirement planning. And I think that is one message that sometimes people lose sight of is that retirement, once you retire, you're done working. There's there's no way to correct the mistake. So if you are making behavioral mistakes in retirement, for some people, it's that's it. It's it, they're all done. We make them throughout our lives while we're working, and and we can live with them because we have time. We have the ability to work more, save more, adjust our budgets. We have ways to pivot when we're still working and young. But once we retire, the number of options in terms of pivoting go away. There, there isn't many. Yeah, Paul. no, they do. And I think, I think some of these actually become more prevalent as we age, right? And as we get close to retirement. So, so it's almost a, for some people, a perfect storm. It's the, it, it's the time you don't want to make these mistakes that many people are in part because as we age, a lot of these issues come up. It's, it's interesting, Paul. It's usually one of two. There's many. We're going to discuss many, but they're centered around either overconfidence, right? Because baby boomers have been the, the, the most successful generation in history. There's the greatest wealth in history transferring to the next generation. So they've been successful and therefore become overconfident. Or it's anxiety and fear, which is most common with retirement. I think people don't understand that most of you in retirement will live on and spend a lot less money than you otherwise could because of fear. It's all fear driven. I tell, I say this all the time, Paul. Old people aren't cheap. They're scared. So as a result, they underspend. And as a result, they don't get to enjoy the retirement they otherwise could have. And that's really at the core of why we teach our classes, Paul, is teach people how to eliminate some of those fear, that fear and overconfidence, both of the emotions, by constructing a retirement plan step by step, year by year for all 30 years. So I'm going to encourage you to register for one of our seven hour, yes, seven hour courses It's $29 to attend. The tuition goes to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. 
We're glad to have you with us again. Very easy to get registered for those courses. Also want to make sure that you know you can find Kirk and Paul on Facebook. That's right. Just search for the Retirement Education Foundation. Once you follow that page, you'll be in the know with everything the foundation is doing to help you get to and through retirement successfully. Again, it all starts with education, and it is a pleasure to be here with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. I love this topic today, right? We're talking about behavior, and it sounds like psychology, and it really is. And yes, psychology and financial health kind of go hand in hand here, as Kirk and Paul are mentioning. And there are specific behaviors that will get you in trouble as an investor, someone who wants to retire. That's the dream, right? We all want to be able to retire successfully. So getting our behavior correct now is imperative, right? Before we even answer, I just want to say, you know, you sort of burst my bubble there, Megan, when you said that as parents, we were not perfect. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I did <laughs> not you, know Paul. that. I'm, I'm disappointed a little bit. I here, thought my right? child, my children, I thought my were, children angels. were angels. I mean, seriously. <laughs> and they're probably listening right now. Exactly. And laughing. Sure, dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure we are. Whatever you want to believe. We've done a, They've done a good job. They have. So, look, I know the first topic we're going to cover in our next segment is greed and overconfidence. And I love the material, the content, the research Paul has done to put this uh, information together this week. Because some of the statistics, I I'll give you one going into this next segment. Dunning and Kruger did a study, and we're going to talk about this study of overconfidence, how people begin to learn to do something, whether it's investing, driving, whatever it is. It's remarkable. They did a study, and what they found is that over 90% of the people that were polled thought they were excellent drivers. Well, <laughs> we know 90% of the people aren't excellent drivers, nor are they excellent at investing. And the statistics, the numbers of how people think they've performed and how they actually perform is shocking. Do you know in that study also – that people also said they were better than average and getting along with people. 90% of the people thought they were better than average. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Just look at our society. Exactly. Right now. We're doing a good job of getting exactly. along right now, exactly. aren't we? So again, we're going to encourage you to register for one of our seven hour courses. We teach them at all the major universities. The tuition, the $29 that cost to, to attend the course goes to charity. Um, you get a 200 page textbook and we're going to teach you how to build your own plan for retirement, taxes, income, estate, legacy planning. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we're back with much more Kirk and Paul after this. Glad to be back with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler for another edition of the Retirement Education Hour. Kirk and Paul are financial instructors and Today, they're telling us that there are possibly some behaviors that you and I could be engaged in that might not be setting us up for success with retirement, understanding those, getting out in front of them, and then most importantly, correcting them. That's the key to having success in retirement. And Kirk and Paul go into a lot of detail about the correct behaviors that investors need leading up to and then in retirement. They do that at the courses that they teach. And these courses are taught at local universities here in our community. Right now, we're making some adjustments just to meet you where you are in terms of your comfort level, whether you'd rather do that virtually. They do have courses that way. And you can still meet with a small group for a course. These are seven to eight hour courses, and you can register today. Go to the website, Retirement Planning edu.com. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.com. The phone number 800-240-8981. We always hear that saying, right? Pride goes before a fall. Thinking huh. you know too much, you've got it all figured out. Everything is going to work out just great. And it kind of creates a blind spot for us, doesn't it? Is that one of these behaviors we need to focus on, Kirk and Paul? otherwise known as overconfidence, right? I, gosh, Megan, Paul, I, I hope that this, this show today does help people to maybe sit down and take this opportunity, be a little insightful and think about what is at stake here, right? You know, we say this, I say this, I think at every class, Paul, if tomorrow you were told that you had a tumor on your brain and you needed to have brain surgery, are you going to the surgeon that's done it once or are you going to go to the surgeon that's done it thousands of times? 
Obvious. The obvious answer is you went to the one that's done it thousands of times. But yet, when it comes to retirement planning in our own money, many of you feel like you've got it figured out. So we're going to do this for the first time ourselves without any horrible harm that can come to you in retirement. So my question to all of you that think you've got this figured out, and I understand why you think you figured it out, right? Listen, 10,000 baby boomers retiring every single day right now. We have the greatest transfer of wealth that's going to go from the baby boomers down to the next generation. You guys, you baby boomers, all of you have been incredibly financially successful, like the best generation of all time, right? So I understand the overconfidence, but again, why are you treating your finances any different than your health, particularly when you're in the most vulnerable stage of your life, which is retirement? I can't go get another job or I may become incapacitated, or I may die and I have a spouse. Usually if there's overconfidence, it's a do-it-yourself, or that means the spouse isn't involved. So what is that spouse going to do when your overconfidentness dies, right? Or fails, or has a cognitive impairments, or like, do you guys realize, I'm sorry, I'm being a little snarky here, but do you realize that things are going to change as you age? You are entering the most vulnerable stages of your life. And people lose objectivity with their own finances. Even when they make mistakes, they don't even want to admit they made mistakes. And it's going to cause irreparable harm for many people in the most critical time of their life and ultimately becoming dependent on their children or somebody else, which we've right. seen how many times, Paul? Right, many times. So let's just put some numbers to this. So, Please. so people, people, you know, we don't, we're not just saying it because we think it or because it's our experiences. There was a study not long ago done asking investors, so you know, how well do you think you did? And the majority, you know, overstated their performance. But to give you numbers, a third of them actually said they did better when in fact they were lagging by 5%. 25% of the participants who said they did better than average did ended up actually doing about 15% worse than what they said. So, (laughs) I mean, and and, and that's not, that's not atypical. How many times do you sit down with somebody the first time and you say to them, okay, how well did you do? And and people always think they did better than than they did. Always, always. always. Another study, Paul, that you you quote here. Another study uh, found that investors overstated their performance by eleven and a half percent per year. Is that amazing? Eleven and a half percent. That's not First a little. Off, your expectation is to make eleven and a half percent per year in retirement. You have a much bigger problem right, right, than right. just psychology. I mean, you do need a therapist, but you also need to find somebody that's going to give you some reality. Because that's insane. I know what's happening in the market in the day trading, the games that are being played right now. This isn't reality, folks. To, 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 to have that sort of expectation, over the last 30 years, the S&P 500 has performed at 10%. But the risk you had to take to get that 10%, and if your timing was off because of something we talk about endlessly, sequence of return risk, and I'm not going to explain it, but simply put, if you are taking money out of accounts when the market is down, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75% if that happens in the first five years of your retirement. There's too many risks, and this overconfidence is going to cause a lot of irreparable harm for people, Paul. Yeah, no, it is. And and I think most people out there realize that, especially if you're planning on retiring or you're in retirement, overconfidence is one of those behaviors that are going to get you in serious trouble. It's not the only one. So we're going to move on. Let's move yeah. on. The second one that we see a lot, and, and this is – this may be in the top of the list, and, and I hate to talk about it because it sounds like we're being pejorative, we're being mean-spirited. Good word. But greed, greed is probably the single biggest behavior that gets in the way of people making mistakes. And, and I think there was no better time that we saw during the dot-com crisis. I mean, there was a time, I, I remember, I, friends were saying, anything that ended in dot-com, you bought? Because, <laughs> right? And, and because the market was crazy and people, it was... It was just greed. People were doing great, but it was never enough. Paul, we've seen that more recently, right before the COVID uh, totally. crash here. Um, we may be seeing it again now, which is really delusional because there is going to be more volatility. I, we're not suggesting the market isn't going to continue to trend higher. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But what you think is going – and I want to make sure we come back to greed in our beginning of our next segment because we're going to run out of time. But I want to make sure people – understand or hears this they may not understand this but what drives your success in retirement what drives your performance in retirement is not the way the the the, the performance of your mutual funds or your investments or your stocks your bonds your etfs 
It is not the investments that drive success in retirement. I know that's really difficult to understand, but that's why you have to come to our class to learn. It's income planning. It's tax planning. When do I take income from which accounts at what age? How do I, do I take it from my IRAs, non-IRAs, Ross? When do I take it from where and how do I minimize taxes so my money lasts longer? Please register for our seven-hour course so you can learn how to construct your own retirement plan. It's $29. It goes to charity, so it's deductible for you. Register for one of our classes. We're teaching at all the major universities, and we're streaming it live. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. There's much more with Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can search Facebook for the Retirement Education Foundation. When you follow that page, you will be in the know with everything Kirk and Paul are doing and how you can become further educated on planning for a successful retirement. Kirk and Paul can help. They've been doing this a long time, helping us get to and through retirement successfully. So reach out today by Facebook on Retirement Education Foundation. That's all you have to search or get registered for one of their courses. And these courses are being taught all the time. You can register for a day and time that works for you by calling 800-240-8981 or go online, retirementplanningedu.com. Today, we're talking about some of the behaviors that could get us into some financial trouble if we're not careful, if we're not aware. And really, that's what this is about, Kirk and Paul, is just bringing awareness. Sometimes we do things we don't even realize we're doing it, right? We do. Uh, We have been conditioned to serve money for our whole lives, right? I mean, think about it. Our whole lives, our goal has been to save for retirement, save for our children, save for college education. We're working hard serving our money so that at some point, hopefully, we can transition our relationship with money to allow money to serve us. And the challenge for so many people, Paul, is that They never allow themselves to transition to allowing money to serve them and continue to serve money. What do I mean? Well, it's that scoreboard watching, that greed, that scoreboard watching mentality. And Paul, to be fair, it's not always greed. It's it's um, habit. It's behavior. Right. It is what they know. I'm supposed to see my money go up, go up, go up, grow, 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 serve it, serve it, serve it. And. It's okay. It's okay to control a uh, controlled spend down of your money in retirement. In fact, for many people who legacy, it's not important. That's what they ought to be doing is making sure they have a plan that they can never outlive their money, but allow themselves to c- controlled spend down of their principal so that they can enjoy their retirement. And I think Paul greed is part of it. I think conditioning and your relationship with money is part of it. And we've got to shift that mentality to allow yourself to stop scoreboard watching. And and Warren Buffett said it best. And uh, please hear this for just pause for a minute and hear what I'm saying, because it's Buffett, not me saying it. Ready? You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, I'll translate. If you've got enough right now, then what in the heck are you doing taking more risk to try to make it grow more when you've got everything you need to give you what you want in retirement. That is your goal, to give you what you want in retirement, right? So if legacy is your goal, well, then we need to explore other strategies to be able to create some legacy for your heirs that so that you will not impact and put yourself at peril. Your own, impact yourselves of outliving your money because you're taking too much risk to try to grow your money for your children. There are ways to do it. And there's a lot of strategies to do it, but you have to make sure, right? Again, if you've won the marathon, if you've already won the race, then do you need to break the world record? This is what we're talking about greed, Paul, right? Right. No question. We see it all the time and, and I, and it's destructive. It's destructive so in most destructive. aspects of our lives, but especially financially. So, you know, equally destructive, right? So greed is on one end of the spectrum, Kirk, right? Yep. 
On the other end of the spectrum, which is equally destructive, is fear of change, right? I think it's more destructive for retirees. Fear. Fear. And, and, and here's one area I just want to, to, to comment on. We meet people all the time. We sit down with a lot of people. And how many times have you sat down with somebody who's been with an advisor for a long time, right? They're comfortable with them. They have this emotional relation with them, right? But they, they'll say, I know my advisor isn't doing what they need to do. My advisors do no planning for me. I know I'm in a different stage of life. I know this advisor is not good for me at this stage. However, I can't leave because I'm afraid to change, right? And, and talk about self-destructive. I'm sorry, you guys. If yes. that's you, that's so – I mean, go, go have coffee with your advisor. Take him, out, him or her out to dinner if you want. Create a friendship. But at the end of the day, if you know they're not doing what you need to do, fear of change is going to kill you. Paul, so – Yeah, fear is irrational, right? Anxiety causes irrational behavior. And so fear and the advisor story is also loyalty. Like I've had this relationship, but look, and that's what our class is about, Paul. It's showing people what they need and what is a plan. So they, they don't, I don't know that people understand what a plan is, but what's remarkable to me is people who've attended our course, seven hour course, they know what they need now. They know there is a there's a plan where you can construct year by year what your where your money is coming from, which accounts at what age, how to minimize taxes. Minimizing taxes, I mean, I, I think on, on average our clients are saving a couple hundred thousand dollars plus over their lifetime. That means your money lasts longer just by changing the order of take when you take money out of which accounts. That helps extend the life of your money, right? So you... They come to the class, they know they don't have a plan. They have no idea. They're either way under living their means because no one's shown them a plan to give them the confidence to overcome that fear and anxiety about living their money, or they're way overspending their money because no one's shown them how dangerous what they're doing. There's no plan. They're just, and, 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 they're, and they're frozen, Paul. They can't move because of fear and anxiety. And one of the exercises I tell people all the time to do in our classes, you need to make a checklist, particularly after you attend a class. Once you have a better idea of what kind of advisor you should be looking for, because we teach that, how do they get paid? Are they fiduciaries? What does a plan look like? Um, How do you do background checks if they've ever had any legal issues? We walk you and teach you that in the class. And after you take that class, you need to take, make a list like a pros and cons list. But in this case, it's just all the things you need to write down, all the things you need to know that you want and need to have to be confidence, confident in retirement, to give you the freedom you're looking for in retirement. And if you get all of those answers that you're looking for, you check all the boxes and you still can't pull the trigger to be able to find somebody, the right person to help you, you can't leave your existing advisor. That means it's it's anxiety. That's clearly anxiety. It's not logical. And that's an exercise that's really helpful. So I'm going to encourage all of you to register for our seven-hour courses. We're teaching at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Oakland University, Michigan State University. We teach in our learning center in Livonia. We're streaming it live. We're doing small groups. It's $29 to attend. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad to have you aboard here on the show. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler. They're with the Retirement Education Foundation. You can find them on Facebook. You can also get registered for their courses. These are taught at local universities in a small group setting due to the pandemic, or you can even take a virtual course. And this is really an investment of your time. These are seven to eight hours. It's a full download of what you need to plan successfully for a 21st century retirement. I want to give you the phone number to get registered. It's 800 240 8981. Or you can go online to do that. Very simple. Just go to retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk and Paul, I saw a quote the other day and I really loved it. In fact, I shared it with my eight-year-old son. It says this, bravery is acknowledging your fear and doing it anyway. 
I Bravery is acknowledging Great. your fear and doing it anyway. So as investors, we tend to get fearful, don't we? And that can be one of those bad behaviors we're talking about on the show today. It is. And I love that. I'm, I'm going to use it if you don't mind, Megan, with my 16-year-old. But um, no, fear fear really does immobilize us. And, and there are a lot of reasons for it. Part of it is some of us are just wired that way, right? There are some people who are naturally more anxious, more fearful. Sometimes it's because people have been burned. Like Kirk and I will sit down with someone. We meet people and, you know, either they got burned in the market or they got burned by an advisor. They got burned in an investment. If you've had a bad experience that for some people that that shuts them down and they, they can't make any future decisions. So they end up making no decisions, which, by the way, just to let you know, if you're making no decisions, that is a decision. It's not the best decision. So I think sometimes when people have had bad experiences and they've been burned, that anxiety, that fear kicks in and then they they don't make any decision. And I Kirk, that's one of the benefits of teaching. Right. I think it is, Paul, you know, in part of the challenge for those people who have been burned or had a bad experience in the market or, or any all of the above. Right. Is that there's so much conflicting information out there. It's really hard to educate yourself because there's so much we call financial marketing people with an agenda. And so you don't know what to believe because you'll hear two sides. There's no uniformity in our industry and, and what the best approach to anything is. And so that was the whole goal, Paul, with 10 years ago when we started teaching these classes, one of the really critical pieces of our class we consistently hear about is at the end of our class, when we walk, after we've shown them what a plan looks like, what you need, what you should be looking for, the how it can impact and affect your retirement, and extend the life of your money, give you the confidence, that freedom, because you get you, you can eliminate the anxiety and fear because you are in control and you know what's happening, when it's happening, why it's happening. You know if one spouse predeceases the other spouse, when one spouse dies, that surviving spouse knows exactly what to do. There's a plan to follow. It's a map to follow all the way through every step. If you have a long-term care event, this is what you do. If this person dies, this is what you do, and this is where you're getting your money from. It just creates a lot of confidence to deal with the, that, that, those fears and anxiety. But beyond that, once you identify all those things you're looking for, now you have to find somebody to help you. And I know a lot of people come to our class, Paul, often come to our class thinking, well, if I come to the class and I want to work with these people in their private practice, they can. And well, that's unfortunately not the truth. We, we have too many people wanting our help, which is a great problem to have. We can only help about 40 percent, 40, 50 percent of the people that want our help. So one of the I think and what we constantly hear back critical pieces of the class is at the end when we say, how do you choose an advisor? How do you do background check? How do you know if they're a fiduciary? How do you know how they get paid? What do the disclosures mean at the bottom of their, their marketing materials? Are they a small firm or a large firm? How do you read between the lines? How do you interview that advisor? What should you be looking for? What are the critical questions to answer? We spend a lot of time on this with people who attend our class because we can't help everyone. So we want to be able to provide those people, particularly with fear, anxiety, because they've had bad experiences and been burned, now you've been, you're empowered. You now know what you need, what you want, what you're looking for, and now at the end, we give you the tools on how to go find that person. And all we can tell you is, you know, we've had thousands of people come through this class, and we're teaching at all the major universities, Michigan, Eastern, Michigan State, Oakland University. We're on WWJ every week, twice a week, in fact. We're on uh, Fox 2 Detroit uh, News every two weeks now as their financial expert, or used to be once a month. If we weren't teaching good material in classes, we weren't empowering people, we wouldn't still be allowed to do this at all these different places. This is a major, major step in your life. There's so much emotions with retirement, with money, with end of life that you need to empower yourself so you can have that freedom in retirement, Paul. I'm sorry, I got on a little soapbox. No, no, no. I, the, the, I, <laughs> I, I, I think we can sort of bring all that to saying knowledge helps manage anxiety and fear, right? The more information. For sure. However, I'm going to say something that's somewhat controversial, which is, which is there's a fine line here between thinking it's great to go to a class. I love that people come to class. I love, I'm all about learning. But there's a fine line between Thinking you're knowledgeable versus thinking you're familiar. And so 
I great. Love that. Come to the class. Learn. Learn what you know. Learn what you don't know. But just because you come to a class, I'm sorry to say this, also doesn't make you an expert. And we meet a lot of really smart, talented people in their own personal professions who know a lot of what they do. But just because you're an expert in your field doesn't mean you're an expert in everything. So come to te- come learn, become educated. But just because you learn a few things also doesn't make you an expert. I, I, I'm, that's, a, that's a mistake, Kirk. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect. That we is see exactly. this all the time, and, and that's, that's problematic equally. Oh, sure. That, that, that goes back to the overconfidence, right? You know a little bit. Now you're an expert. That's right. right? That's right. Or you've read magazines. You've studied this. Look, we know you're a CFO. We, look, CFOs, uh, CPAs, um, uh, executives. Uh, professors, econ professors, right, from the major universities. They're all attending our classes. They're all coming to our classes. These are highly intelligent people, often very good with money and finances. That doesn't mean you understand when and how to take money from which accounts. doesn't mean you understand sequence of return and how to minimize sequence of return risk. It doesn't mean you know how to take money and minimize your taxes by understanding how to bracket manage to Roth convert using charitable strategies to offset Roth conversions so that you end up with more money in your pocket and still give to charity. These strategies are what we're teaching you in the class, but it's complicated. I mean, when we build a plan, Paul, it takes us 20 to 40 hours to construct a plan for a client, and that's why we can only help so many people. So come to the class, seven hours. It's $29. Tuition goes to charity. You can register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com. Or you can call 800-240-8981. And we have much more when we return. The Retirement Education Hour continues straight ahead. Here on the Retirement Education Hour with financial instructors Kirk Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler, I'm Megan Mozak, and we're glad to have you with us today. If you'd like to get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's courses, and these are held all year long, you can find one that works for you, whether it's virtual, online class, or a small in-person course, be sure to register at the website retirementplanningedu. Com. When you do, there will be a course fee. That fee goes to charity, the charities that Kirk and Paul support. And this is a, a big investment of your time, seven to eight hours. So it's a real download, helping you understand the complexities and, and really the holistic nature of the plan that's necessary in a modern retirement. You can call 800-240-8981 to get registered. We're talking about behavior today on the show. Yes, this is a financial retirement planning show, but we're talking about behavior today because some behaviors, I can trip you up when you're trying to plan for a successful retirement. We talked about fear. We talked about greed and overconfidence, all of these things that could be stumbling blocks. Kirk and Paul, what else should we be aware of? Well, there's there's a term called herd mentality, right? So in other words... Everyone's selling, I better sell. Everyone's buying, I better buy. Following the masses, Paul. Mm-hmm. Following the herd. Following the herd. And it's, it's more common than you would think. Um, I, I was shocked when I looked at some of the statistics and numbers. A lot of people are doing things because other people are doing things as it relates to their finances. And um, it's often a really big mistake, right? It is. You know, it, one of the things that... that sort of drives me a little crazy is when I sit down with someone and they say they have a friend. I, I, you always know when someone starts a sentence, Co-worker. they have a friend. And, and you know, listen, you all talk Family to each member. other, right? You talk to your friends and you're sharing experiences and, and you, and, and I, I hear people come to me, Paul, you know, this is what I'm doing. What do you think? There is the tendency that you assume that if you have a friend who's smart and they're doing something or you read in the newspaper, the people do something, you assume it's a good decision. So you do it. This is where run-ups happen and buy-offs. This is the reason why this sometimes happens. People just do things because others are. That's not a good reason. I'll give a great example, Paul, right? It's, it's Social Security uh, is a really great example of this. Constantly we hear that my friends are doing this. Right. Or I've been told that I need to live until 80, so I should take my Social Security early. Because if I die early, then I didn't get as much as I otherwise could. 
Like, you're dead. Like, you would even know, by the way. Right? But trust me, you'll know if you live and you're getting a lot less money and you outlive your money because you were banking on whether or not you made 79 or 80 or not. So this whole idea of a one-size-fits-all, right, I think that's where it comes to. All these financial experts, your friends, your family, everyone has this theory, belief, in it, it's like people are looking for general rules for retirement planning and and it's predominantly because our industry benefits from that right right the, our industry is transactional in nature their goal is to meet as many of you as they possibly can spend as little time with you as they have to to sell you as much as they can so the easier the more simple the rules the more one size fits all the more herd mentality they they can create through their messaging the easier their job is and the more profitable, scalable their business model is. Right, Paul? It, it is. And if you want to look at the people who, who you you quote, you love quoting him, and this is, you know, so Warren Buffett, I think we would argue has been fairly successful, right? Sure. Pretty good, right? I love, he said this, and this goes back to her mentality. What he does is, what he says is, when basically when people are getting greedy, right? When When people are getting greedy, that's the time to be fearful. When people are fearful, that's the time to be greedy, right? So he does the exact opposite of her mentality. Well, it's funny because there's something called a reversion to the mean. That's right. That's right? right. And it, that is it goes against the herd. That goes right. against the mentality, that's right. right? So when something outperforms, it will likely underperform later. It, later in the near term. And what was underperforming will then therefore outperform. That's why herd mentality gets you into trouble. It does. It's like chasing your tail. Right. You're running in circles chasing your tail. Ooh, I don't like the performance of this, so let me jump into something that's been performing really well. That thinking it's going to continue forever to perform well, well, it doesn't work that way. Whether it's small cap, value, growth, international, it's always shifting. That's in, from an investment perspective. But for me in our group of people, because investments don't drive performance and and success in retirement. We keep saying it. You got to come to class to understand it. We'll prove it time and time again. I'll show you. We'll show you how you can have an average 10% rate of return over a 20-year period, live on 5% a year, and you will outlive your money in 17 years. It depends on what the market does early. Performance isn't the driving factor in retirement. It's when and how you're taking your income. Herd mentality is so dangerous for retirees because all of you have unique variables. Some of you are married. Some of you are single. Some of you have no age difference. Some of you have a five-year, a 10-year age gap. Some of you have more IRA money and 401k money. Some of you have more what we call taxable or non-qualified money. Some of you have underlying health issues. Some of you have one spouse that takes care of everything and the other spouse. All of these variables are going to impact all of your decision. There is no one size fits all. And that's why every single client we take on in our personal practice, and I know we don't talk about it much, but I think it's important. It takes us 20 to 40 hours to construct their own individual retirement plan, each one of them. That's why we can only take on about 40% of the people that want our help. So the herd mentality is really dangerous in retirement because I think it's this one size fits all that our industry is trying to shove everyone into and it's dangerous. People are going to outlive their money and make a lot of bad decisions looking for simple solutions as opposed to investing the time, doing the research, attending a seven-hour course, hiring an advisor who's actually going to spend 20 to 40 hours to construct a retirement plan for you, mapping everything out so it's perfect for you, not for the masses. Yeah, so let, let's let's take a couple seconds to talk more in depth about our class so, right, so we've been teaching them face-to-face at local universities for a long time. Obviously, with the pandemic, we've had a, to be a little more careful, so we've been live streaming them. Lately, we've been having small groups that people have been attending. We've taught them at all the you know, local universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State University, the, the Novi Campus, Oakland University, Eastern Michigan University. We've been teaching them here at our learning center. It's $29 to attend. It's a seven-hour course. You're going to get a 200-page textbook. We donate the proceeds to charity. We charge because we know if you, if, you pay, if you pay money, you're going to pay attention. So we encourage you to call 1-800-240-8981. That's 800-240-8981. And you can register when you call or go to retirementplanningedu.com. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.com. 
back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Glad you tuned in today to the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak joined by Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. They are financial instructors. If you're feeling like, wow, I could really benefit from some financial instruction, well, you're in the right place. In fact, you can get registered to sit in on a course taught by Kirk or Paul. These are seven to eight hour courses. They're held in small groups or online. You can go to a virtual class. You can get registered at the website, retirementplanningedu.com, or you can call as well to register 800-240-8981. On the show today, we're talking about some behaviors that could trip you up as an investor, as someone thinking about retirement. And these behaviors, if you know about them and you can watch out for them, the good news is you can get out in front of them and prevent them from destroying the retirement of your dreams. And we've talked about a lot here, Kirk and Paul, from greed to fear, overconfidence. What's the antidote here? Because there's a lot of behaviors that could, as we said, trip us up. What's the antidote to some of these behaviors? Well, I think it's education. I think it's... I, I, Okay, a little self-serving here, but candidly, and it's why we started teaching the classes almost 10 years ago now, is that, and, and it's seven hours for a reason. There is that much content to be taught to teach you how to construct your own retirement plan. It's, it's just so much information, and th because there's so much misinformation, and the class almost acts as a filter for some of the noise and confusion to help you get a clearer vision of what you should be doing needing, looking for in retirement, how everything needs a shift, including your relationship with money. And I, I think the last, the last behavior, I know that Paul's seen quite a bit recently, and, and I know you wanted to talk about Paul, was this, there, there was so much fear of losing money or fear of who's being elected or not being elected or who's being impeached or this short-term market fear that is driving these really important long-term decisions. So as a result, they many people are sitting, they're sitting in cash. They've been, there's people sitting in cash from 2007 financial, eight, 2008 financial crisis, crisis still, right? Once you go to cash, when you make that call, when you try to market time, when do you go back in? Right, <laughs> right. No, no. In fact, in March, Kirk, Morningstar estimated, and this is crazy, $320 billion was pulled out of the market in March. And you know, you know the statistic I say, you know, from, from March to J end of June, the S&P went up how much? But 38%. Right. That's incredible. So all those people, all of you, I hate to say it, there may be people listening right here who went to cash. You, you probably hate to hear this and Paul, be reminded. It was over 30% of people. Over the age of 65 years old at Fidelity. That's $7 right. billion dollars at Fidelity. Right. And all of this. Or all, seven. Is it seven billion? Seven billion. Yeah, yeah. seven billion. And, and all of this goes back to what you just said, which is people would are motivated more by avoiding pain than making money, right? So we'll do anything to avoid losses rather than make money. So what people do is they, they go to cash. But you said this. Um, when you go to cash, you have to make two really important decisions, right? You have to figure out not only when to go out. But when do you go back in? And and I guarantee you, if you didn't go back in right now, if you went to cash in March and you're not back in, you're probably hitting yourself right now. And you probably won't go back in because you're waiting for it to of pull back of again. Of course, and it may not. And it may, so he, th th that's crazy. So first, full disclosure, 1,000 clients were responsible for over a billion dollars in our personal practice. And we do not, we didn't have one person go to cash. Not one of our clients went to cash. Not ever have we had a client go to cash in any of the crisis, financial meltdowns, anything that's ever happened. And the reason why is because there's a plan and a plan anticipates short term market events. They're not impacted by short term market events because there is a pivot available for those short term market events to avoid the pain and the long term damage it can do to your finances and your money. So there's no reason to ever go to cash. So this whole idea of waiting, depending on who's being elected, who's being impeached, all this craziness, these short-term events, 
that are driving your financial decisions, it's because you don't have a plan. Right. No one has provided that for you. So I, I want to clarify one thing. The point is nobody went to cash out of fear. None. Right? We may have made an allocated decision a strategic decision that we wanted to take a certain amount of money to go to cash because they were about to take money out of the, you know, for, for income, for income in the but short th- term. that's right. Short term. But your point is we ha- we've never had anybody out of fear, panic, go to cash. That's Zero. the key. Zero. And that, that's the whole purpose of the show, right? right? The whole purpose of this show and our class and our class is to help people not make decisions because of fear, anxiety, all of these behavioral reasons. You make decisions because it's strategic. And when you have a plan, that you can follow, you can actually make strategic decisions, and it sort of anchors you, not to get into another behavior, it anchors you into making good decisions, not bad decisions. For sure, Paul. And it goes back to what we started with. Look, I constantly, I think they say this every show, older people, your grandma and grandpa or your moms and dads aren't cheap. They're, it's not that, well, maybe they are, but the, the reason they're behaving the way they're behaving with money isn't because they're cheap. It's because they're afraid. Look, the first cognitive skill you're going to lose likely will be mathematics, connecting the dots. It won't make total sense. And when things, you can't connect dots and things don't totally make sense for you, and you don't have a written plan, summarized plan, not only spreadsheets, but a summarized plan to read and follow that maps it all out, you are going to, you're going to shut down. You're not going to spend. You're going to way underspend what you otherwise could be spending in retirement because you don't have a plan and because you're scared, because anxiety and fear. This is the whole purpose of our class. Please, I, I, I feel like I'm begging people to invest seven hours of time to set up their own retirements, right? This is only going to help you. No matter how smart you are, how much education you have, spend seven hours. Go through a 200-page textbook. You get the textbook to take home. It's a great resource for you. It's a donation to charity of $29, and we're teaching it everywhere, at all the major universities, University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Eastern Michigan University, Oakland University. We teach right here in our learning center in Livonia. Seven-hour class, we're streaming it live, and we're doing small groups because of COVID. Register at retirementplanningedu.com, retirementplanningedu.com, or call 800-240-8981. All matters discussed during this show are for informational purposes only. Opinions expressed are solely those of senior planning advisors and staff. All topics covered are believed to be from reliable sources. However, Senior Planning Advisors makes no representations as to its accuracy or completeness. This shall in no way be construed as a solicitation to sell securities or investment advisory services to residents of any state other than Michigan or where otherwise permitted. Topics should be discussed with your individual advisor prior to implementation. Fee-based financial planning and investment advisory services offered through Strategic Investment Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Strategic Investment Advisors and Senior Planning Advisors are affiliated companies. This radio show is a paid placement.